So in the last video, we worked through some examples, um, some special cases, I called them, which is what this is here. These special cases actually define some properties that become the same for any of these situations. And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to be talking about some basic properties of logs. Okay, we've actually worked through each and every one of these in the last video, you just didn't know that they defined whole properties in itself. So we're going to work through them again by proving these here, and then we'll actually do some examples that go along with them. Okay, the first one is any time you have a log, now these hold true for natural logs, um, any time you have a log where your argument is 1, it's guaranteed that the answer of this log is equal to 0. And the reason is, is, if I transform this into exponential form, b to what power is going to give us 1? Well, the answer here has got to be 0 because we know that b cannot be 1 itself. So anytime you have a 1 in the argument, your answer is guaranteed to be 0. So just like this one here, notice this is a natural log form. Doesn't matter, same thing. If I converted this into exponential notation, we know this would be 407 to what power is equal to 1. We know our answer is going to be 0, but we actually don't even need to do this work. If my argument is 1, I know that the answer is straight up guaranteed to be 0, and your explanation would be I used property 1. Okay, number 2, anytime your bases match, and we saw this quite a few times on our special cases, we saw that in 1, we saw that in 3, we saw that here in 4. Anytime your bases match, those bases, in essence, cancel out, and it gives you your exponent. And so this is going to be the same thing as property 2 and property 3. The big difference is that property 2 does not have an exponent defined. Property 3 does. Same thing happens in both of these. If I were to convert them into exponential format, I'd have b to what power is equal to b to the same power. Well, if that's the case, then you know that your powers have to be equal. And so that's why these properties are defined. Okay. So let's work through these examples here. Log of 10, well, I know if there's no base here, it's assumed to be base 10. Anytime my bases match, that means I have my exponent. My unwritten exponent here is 1, and so my answer to this one is 1. Same thing with number 2. Here, my bases match, so that means by property 3, I'm going to end up with just that exponent. Number 4, that is the one that simulated example 5 here, and so maybe we need to work through it one more time so you can see it. This is converting it from exponential notation, b to the y is equal to x, into log notation. Log base b of x is equal to y. So I have my base of b. So if I convert this, this tells me log of base b of my argument x of x is equal to my exponent is equal to my exponent. And notice I just proved an equivalent statement. Log base b of x is equal to log base b of x. So the thing to note here is that anytime you have something in this format where your bases are the same, then your answer is going to be the argument of your log function. So over here in this example, I have e to the natural log of 32. The base of natural log is e. So my bases match, which means they cancel out. And my answer is going to be my argument. And so this answer here is going to be this argument. OK. So we've evaluated quite a few different logs at this point, some of them just rewriting them back and forth in video one. Some of them actually evaluating them. Some of them in special cases. Now we know that we can do all of our special cases by using our properties. But what happens when numbers don't come out nice and neat? Just like when I posed the first question to you. 
b to the what power is equal to 20? Well, I now know that I can rewrite that as log base b of 20 is equal to x, but that still doesn't help me figure out what my x value is. And so we're going to need to be able to put these in the calculator. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to put in the common ones in our calculator, mean log base 10 and natural log base e. And then I will talk about how do we put in these that are not common with different bases into our calculator next. Okay, so let's just talk about these here. Again, notice these are our common logs. 1, 2, and 3 don't have any bases, so those are assumed to be base 10. And 4, 5, and 6 are natural logs, so those are assumed to be base E. I can just type them in my calculator exactly like I see them. So let's pull that calculator up here. Okay, so I have my calculator pulled up. For number 1, I just need to type in the actual log that I see. And if it's base 10, I can just type it in just like I see it. So the log button is over here on the left, log, and then I just need to type in the number that I see, 6, 4, 5, 7, 7, 8. Close my parentheses, and I come up with this value here. So this is approximately 581.008, and so if I round this to four decimal places, I have 5.81008. If I round it to my fourth decimal place, then this would be rounded up, rounded to 1. And so, if I actually wanted to think about this, my question would be, since it's base 10, is 10 to what power is equal to this right here? And now I know 10 to the 5.8101 power is approximately equal to that right there. And you can double check that on your calculator too, if you don't trust what logs actually are. So 10 to the 5.8101, let's see what that comes up to be. So I'm looking for the 645.778. I see that I am not exact, but I'm pretty close. And the reason that I am not exact is because my answer of log continues on and on forever. And I've only rounded it to four decimal places. So if I wanted my exact answer, I would need to put in every one of these decimal places in here and more. Just because this stops at the 10th decimal place here doesn't mean that it stops there. Logs actually typically continue on forever with never repeating. So there are irrational numbers. Okay, let's look at problem number two, which is log of 0.0. .0 Zero 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 two three nine. And so my answer to four decimal places is negative four point six two one six. Again, this would be the same thing as ten to the negative four point six two one six is approximately 0 0.0000239. So that's basically what we are calculating here, is 10 to what power is equal to these numbers on the inside. Okay, let's look at number three then, which is log of negative three. And notice we come up with an answer that says non-real answer. Now, the first thing that you might do is double check that you plugged everything in correctly, which we did. We've typed it in just like we saw it. And so the second thing we might do is investigate. Why is this the case? Well, what we're trying to figure out is 10 to what power is equal to negative 3. Well, it doesn't matter what power I'm going to take a positive number to, that positive number will never be equivalent to a negative number. Positives to any power will always guarantee to be positive. So it makes sense that I cannot take log of a negative number. So my answer here is undefined. It does not simplify. Okay, that's how you type in common logs. Let's type in natural logs. It works the same way, except for you're just going to use your different button. 
So instead of using the log button, you're going to use the natural log button, LN. So LN of 472 is equal to 6.15697. So let me just write this all down. 6.15697. If I will round it to the fourth decimal place, then that actually rounds this up, which actually rounds this up. So this is approximately 6.1570. And what did we do? We say that E to the 6.1570 is approximately 472. Remember, E is the 2.818. So if I do 2.818 to the sixth number, we come out approximately to this here. So the answer that we're looking for, rounded to four decimal places, is that guy. Next, I'm going to type in natural log of 0 0.05. And I get negative 2.9957. And last, the natural log of square root of 87. So natural log, then the square root, then 87. Out of my square root, close my natural log. And I get the answer of 2.23295. Again, I'm going to have to round up here. 2.23295. If I round this up, then that's going to round that up. So the answer is 2.2330. So you can see these are as easy as just typing it in your calculator. But note that we cannot take a log of a negative answer. Okay, that still doesn't help me with my very first question, though, is what is this value? 5 to what power is equal to 20? Now, if I wanted to type this in the calculator, I need to either type it in as log base 10 or natural log base E. So the problem here is that's not the case. So we need to talk about one more property to be able to type in these values into our calculator to figure out what my answer actually is. And that property is the change of base formula. So anytime you want to actually calculate something that's not base 10 or base E, then this is the formula that you need to use. So if I have log base B of M, I can change this to log M divided by log B, provided that they have the same bases. Now, normally we want to convert it either to common log or natural log. It doesn't matter. They both work the same way. So this is equal to log base 10 of M over log base 10 of B. Or I can do the natural log base E of M over the natural log base E of B. So basically, you just take your common log and divide it by the log of your base. Okay. So in number one here, log base 5 of 8 using common logs would be log base 8 over log base 5. That I can type in my calculator. Natural logarithms, that would be the same thing as natural log of 8 divided by natural log of 5. And if we wanted to actually figure out this value, we could type it in the calculator just like we see it. And so the first one I can type in is log of 8 divided by log of 5. And we see the answer is 1.2920. Or I could have done natural log of 8 divided by natural log of 5. And the answer is the same thing, because it doesn't matter using the change of base of formula which one you use as long as your bases match. The first one's both base 10, the second one's both base E, so it works out the same way. And so this one is 1.292. So this is approximately 1.292. Now I can go back and I can ask or answer my original question. 5 to what power is equal to 20? Well, I know that this is the same thing as log base 5 of 20. And I know now that I can write that as log of 20 divided by log of 5. And I know now to type that in my calculator. Log of 20 divided by log of 5. 
And so my answer is 1.8614. So if I want to know 5 to what power is equal to 20, I know it's going to be approximately 5 to the 1.8614, so on and so forth power. That is going to give me my answer of 20. All right, so we have evaluated all of the logs that we want to evaluate, and now we're going to move on to graphing our logarithmic functions.